I'm Paolo Dario. I hold a degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Pisa and I'm a lecturer in biomedical robotics at the Sant'Anna School of Advanced Studies in Pisa. I have always believed and continue to believe in the FET program, future and emerging technologies. It meant embracing new horizons while setting practical goals in the end and understanding that applications will be a long way off still. There's 40 years of research behind the bionic hands we have built. We studied worms, we studied eels, lampreys, we studied octopuses. As if we were modern Leonardo da Vinci's, we studied how many organisms work. We didn't copy them, but drew inspiration to create new engineering principles, new design principles, new mechanisms and new materials. This has been a research focus, one of bio-inspiration and bio-robots. A second focus area is artificial hands and prosthesis. This is also part of what was a long-standing dream, to create hands capable of both dexterity and sensitivity. I'd like to specifically mention the CyberHand project. Today other projects exist and my students and colleagues continue working in this area and they also study artificial touch. The third focus area is a very fundamental project to me, neurobotics. No one had ever thought about systematic collaboration with non-engineering sectors before, for example with neuroscience. And actually this has made it possible to create many different prototypes and to train different people. I'll just mention one of our ideas a man-controlled capsule able to explore inside the human body, almost as if it was in Fantastic Voyage, the book and the film in which a submarine is reduced to very small dimensions. Then, how to control it with the brain? What kind of interface to use? This is one of the problems we have faced in new robotics. Or perhaps you may remember Dr. Octopus in Spider-Man, that mad scientist who has a kind of octopus on his shoulders, inserted into his nervous system. Well, can the brain control a body other than its own? So exploring the unexpected. By the way, this is one of the problems facing Europe. I've often asked myself this. If a 23 or 24-year-old boy like Zuckerberg had come to talk to one of the many top European banks or venture capitalists, they would not have given him a euro. The real challenge for Europe and for all of us is to leave the way open to those who are disruptive thinkers, to the movers and to the shakers. And the FIT program was all about this.